Hi everyone. As you can tell, the uh, laser cutter is pretty well disassembled here. Um, this is kind of a follow-on to the videos about uh, bad engraving. And you can kind of see on this one, and again on this one, that there's um still problems engraving let's see here's another one engraving where it sort of steps over to the sides and um i thought i had it sorted but it kind of came back and so i figured i needed to actually deal with it again um I should have recorded this video before taking all this apart, but you know, that's how it happens. So what I noticed is that this belt had loosened up and it, you know, maybe kind of looked like that on the pulley, um, that kind of gap on the sides. And so I figured that maybe it was, it was skipping teeth. So when I tightened it up, to look, you know, more like that tight. I noticed that when I would move the head back and forth, they went woo, 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 like it was getting tighter and then looser and then tighter and then looser. And I remembered it was like that when I took it out of the box for the first time. And you might be able to hear it on the Y axis. <laughs> doing is I'm pressing it at a given pressure and you should be able to hear that right so um, I, I had assumed that maybe it was the belt that you know when it was shipped maybe the belt had gotten kinked and that was causing it but when I took all of this stuff apart I noticed that, so this is the pulley that goes on the end. Um, I figured maybe the pulley had a problem. Like I thought maybe it was just going to be a bushing, like a really cheap bushing or something. It's actually got a ball bearing in there. Um, but let me show you what I discovered. So this is going to be kind of a hard shot to set up, but um, do you see what I see? Notice how uh, the pulley isn't round. So what's happening is, as the the head moves across, you know, it's like a cam. So, so let's say the part that's tall is on the inside, then the belt is loose, and then as the as it goes to the towards the outside, the belt gets tight. The belt gets tighter, and so what we're actually doing is we're kind of stretching the belt against the motor um, as it travels. And so what was happening, I think, is that as the head was moving, the motor, you know, the belt would get tight and the motor would have to work much, much harder against that tight belt or the tightening belt because the motor is actually tightening the belt, um, which consumes a lot more energy to try to tighten that belt considering... You know, usually they have a material in here that doesn't like to stretch, like uh, Kevlar or something. So the motor's tightening the belt, and then it's stalling as it's trying to tighten the belt. And so it would just end up a coincidence that if I had where the uh, engrave turned around and went back, was it one of those times where it was tightening? I think the acceleration of moving the head direction combined with the extra energy required as the belt was tightening was causing it to stall, you know, exceeding the, the maximum current that the stepper controllers were willing to give to the motor. So, um, so anyways, that's my hypothesis. So I've got it all torn apart, um, and I'm going to see if I can find some kind of a pulley to replace this with at the hobby store.
Um, I took apart, I've got some surplus radio control helicopters that I got, you know, for cheap. And so I was looking into maybe using the pulley. So I've got this pulley from the tail rotor and uh, I've got this this tail rotor pulley as well. Let's see, where is it? There it is. But it's not, it's not wide enough. So there's the pulley and then there's the, the belt. So if it was an extra millimeter wider, you know, I think I could make it work with these tail rotor pulleys, but <clears throat> it isn't. So I'm hoping maybe the hobby store will have, will have another pulley that's that's much much higher quality than this. I suspect this is probably. Um, I mean, it feels kind of like milk carton plastic, so it might be polyethylene. And I'm wondering if it just sitting in the shipping crate, it um, just deformed itself by having the belt, you know, pressing down on it as it you know was hot in the shipping crate or whatever, and softened up. And, and kind of got a flat spot because I mean I I don't know for as much shit as I I uh, give Chinese manufacturing I don't think that they would actually buy pulleys that were that egg shaped you know I, I more suspect that it was a lack of care in specifying the material in shipping rather than being willing to buy a part that was that defective. Well, I couldn't find anything at the hobby store. So what I did is I ended up looking through a box that I have where I just throw all the mechanical junk that I collect when I take stuff apart. And so I found this, which I think is like a capstan for a tape drive like a server tape drive um, and it's you know it's obviously a really high quality bearing um, the mechanics of those types of tape drives are really really nice but it doesn't have a shoulder on the bottom uh, it does on the top so I figure the belt won't be able to come off too far this way so hopefully this shoulder keeps it up um, you have to be careful, you know, when you look at how this would be installed because um, with it installed in the hole, you have to make sure that it doesn't touch that bushing. And it's, there's just enough clearance there. And then another thing... <clears throat> you have to pay attention to is when this is installed across the top you can't have um, interference between the bottom of the bolt and that so I'm going to try to get this sort of put back together and then um, we'll see if I can get get that part working. So I've got everything put back together. Um, got the belt, you know, back on the main pulley there. I don't think I'll be able to show you. Well, that actually turned out okay. So there's the pulley um, on that capstan. And you know, I guess you can see that it's sort of running up against the metal there a little bit. Um, I'll just have to, you know, sort of keep my eye out for belt wear. But the main thing to notice is that it's completely smooth. You can't hear that wah 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 at all, like this one. So I haven't done the, you know, the uh, Y axis at all. And I'm not worried about the Y because this is what, you know, scans during an engrave. And that's what I've been having trouble with. So, um, 
I guess the next thing to do is just to try it. And obvi obviously I had to um, um, align my optics because I had this completely disassembled. So I had to make sure that these were set to the right distance so that that is perfectly 90 degrees to this angle. Well, it's still doing it. You can see that, you know, it's still got these steps. What's really interesting to me, though, is that, for example, these two are almost identical. They're in practically the same spot. And then um, that one is slightly different, but it's still in the neighborhood. But the fact that the nature of these are so close, like it's getting both sides of that eye there and there. Uh, I guess that's not an eye. That's the part of the K. So it's getting the same. It's treating the K almost exactly the same. It does have similar effects by the eyes. Um, makes me think that might be a factor, but it's not doing it on all of them. So, you know, this one etched perfectly, just sort of by itself. And then this one was perfect. So these two I did first and they came out perfect. And then, um, actually I did this one first and then I did these two. Then I did this one. So it's not even a problem I have later on. It really is. This file, for some reason, gives me trouble. I've only tried one on this one. But I have... I don't know where it is now, but I have practically a stack. It's like this one. Um, I have practically a stack of the same design where it ended up having the same problem. See those Chris whatever again common. So these are also the same. So it really is consistent about where I have troubles on the same image. So this makes me think that there might be some kind of a software issue that I don't understand. Um, there I mean, have been suggestions on how to fix people having similar issues. And um, I have tried all of those. So here's a good example again of this one that had trouble in the exact same spot. And then here's another one that I had trouble with. So it's it's a really frustrating issue. Somebody else on the forum recently for um, Laos Laser has talked about a similar problem that they're having. Uh, it's with etching a circle, though, rather than a complicated design. Um, and, you know, the suggestions were the same as you'd expect. Uh, motor current obviously needs to be set right. Uh, the way I've got the motor current set now is after running the machine for a while, this motor is um, hot to, to the touch, but I can hold it. And so that's about where I'm comfortable running this motor current wise. Um, this is still super smooth. So anyway, I'm not really sure what to do. For now, I just um, don't etch the files I have problems with. So until I figure out something more, see you next time.